Aquarium keeping is a notoriously expensive hobby. Contrary to what some beginners think, you don't just need a fish tank to get started, you also need a filter, heater, substrate, fish food, water conditioner, a backup fund for medication and endless other small necessities. This can really drive up the costs, which is definitely not what you want if you're someone with a smaller budget. Luckily though, there are a few things you can do to reduce the costs of getting started and keep the bills down. Watch the video till the end to save some bucks. Welcome to Finding Fishes, let's get started. Use LED lights, although they are often a bit more expensive to buy, LED lights can save you quite some money in the long run. They use significantly less power than regular bulbs, which will help keep your electricity bill down. Because aquariums use a lot of power, saving on those costs can really help make a difference. Another great advantage of LED lights is that they are much better for the environment. You can purchase them from Amazon or a local shop. Another big part of your aquarium electricity bill is the heater, which is necessary in almost all types of setups. Even in subtropical aquariums, a heater is recommended to prevent temperature fluctuations. Because these aquarium heaters use a lot of energy, a great way to keep your yearly electricity costs down is to stick to a lower temperature. This means choosing fish that do well in slightly lower temperatures or choosing a temperature that is at the lower end of the range your current stock prefers. A few degrees can save quite a lot of energy, especially in larger setups. Sometimes you can save money by buying products with brand value and higher initial costs that are cheaper in the long run. Getting a quality filter, heater and aquarium can save you a lot of money and frustration. If your filters keep breaking, this not only means having to get new ones, but also dealing with continuous problems with your aquarium cycle and possibly sick fish. This is a lot more expensive in the long run than just getting a proper filter. Similar to buying your aquarium and equipment used, you can also adopt your stock from other fish keepers. This is especially relevant if you're interested in keeping fish like goldfish and bettas, but works for other species as well. There are always people looking to rehome fish or sometimes their entire stock. Because reselling fish is almost impossible, they are usually offered for free. Apart from saving some money this is also a great way to give fish a new home or save them from life in an unsuitable setup like a bowl, so definitely something to consider while setting up a new aquarium. This may seem like an obvious one, but I actually see fish keepers throw away tanks and equipment that could possibly be repaired quite often. For example, many quality brands offer replacement parts for pieces of their filter that break easily, like the impeller and intake. Replacing a single part is not too difficult and much cheaper than buying a new filter. This not only applies to equipment, but to the actual tank as well. If your aquarium starts leaking, don't just throw it out. Check what caused the leak first. It's usually just a problem with the sealant, which means you can reseal the aquarium yourself. This is not the easiest thing and requires some patience, but aquarium silicone is not expensive, so it's often a better option than buying a whole new tank. You can also often find leaking aquariums for free and repair them yourself. The single most effective trick to keep the cost of setting up an aquarium down is to buy used. There are plenty of sites where you can buy everything you need for prices that are much lower than those at actual aquarium stores. The price of a used, good quality non-damaged aquarium is usually less than half of the store price, even when it's as good as new. Filter, heater and extras like fish food, air stones and leftover medication are often included for a very low price or for free. You can make your own food for many fish species. Many larger fish can be fed on earthworms, after a good wash, or homegrown daphnia. Or you can raid the supermarket veg for peppers, lettuce, sweet potato, tomatoes and others plus most seafood mixes are cheap and can be blended down to feed small fish. You can always add garlic for a health boost too. Some equipment we buy is so simple, yet we still pay for it, there are many tutorials online too, from making canister filters out of a bucket to making an LED. That's it for today guys, hope you really enjoyed the video, keep supporting us and stay tuned for more such interesting videos. Finding fishes remember the name.